Hey everyone, it's Scott again, back with another airline illustration tutorial. Today I'm going to do the WestJet 7879 in the new livery, which is actually a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. And I know I always say that in these videos, but uh, these airline livery illustrations usually take more time than I originally plan on, which just goes to show how complex airline art really is. Anyway, so yeah, in order to do the WestJet livery, I actually had to start out with the boring part first, which is creating the WestJet titles. I'm in Adobe Illustrator right now, just tracing a high-resolution version of the WestJet font, or the typography that goes on the forward section of the fuselage. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, some of the letters are a little complex, like that S there. It takes a little bit of time to get right, but it's okay. Most of the letters are fairly straightforward, like the T and the J and the E here. But anyway, once I have these graphics, uh, and more specifically the logo, which you'll see me create in just a moment, then I can actually start applying or creating, or sorry, recreating the livery and applying it to a blank illustration template. So yeah, I, this is the important part right here. Getting the, uh, the logo itself, which I assume is just like a, an abstract maple leaf of some kind. I gotta get this right because this is the main portion of the livery and I can't do anything without this. And again, you know, it's a little bit more complex than you might assume just by looking at it. Uh, it's got some, some radius corners there and all the corners meet uh, very closely and you got to get that right in order to make the livery look halfway decent. Okay, so now I am in Adobe Illustrator. I've got my line drawing Boeing 787 template, uh, which I've linked to in the description below. You can get the free version of this on my blog. Anyway, I'm just using it as an underlay just so I can get the graphics sized appropriately. And uh, you can see I'm just eyeballing it. I've got that logo that I created just a moment ago. And I'm just trying to get it matched with the photo as closely as I can. And again, you know, there's no rocket science to this. You can get really technical if you want. And you can you know, get out the ruler tool and measure everything exactly. But I just like to eyeball it. In real life, each aircraft is different. So just blocking out the shapes really quickly by eye. It's the fastest way for me to do it. You certainly don't have to do it that way. Okay, so now I am in Photoshop and I'm using my all white template that I created. And I'm taking the graphics that I just created in Illustrator and again, just eyeballing them over top of this all white template. Now, it's important to note that I'm copying and pasting those graphics directly from Illustrator into Photoshop. That way they remain vector graphics and I can scale them and I can edit them within Photoshop without losing any quality, which is, uh, you know, if you're doing high quality airliner art, that's exactly what you want to do. So now that I've got that base shape or that, that arc on the lower section of the fuselage created, I'm taking that logo and trying to piece it together here on the vertical stabilizer. And as you can see, it's not a direct representation of that logo. And what I mean by that is they, they really abstracted this thing and it's <laughs> they built it in pieces or they, they constructed it in pieces on the vertical stabilizer. The logo itself remains as it was drawn, but it's layered. There are multiple layers to the logo. There's some transparency, there's some gradients. It's really complex, and I didn't really notice any of this <laughs> until I started drawing this illustration. It's, you know, trying to match those gradients and getting all the size and proportions correctly. It's a lot, and this is a really advanced livery. It's not something I would recommend for beginners to try and replicate, although I, I guess I can't say that entirely because it's also a really good one to learn on simply because there are so many layers. You're going to have to deal with uh, multiple pieces and getting everything lined up correctly. And as long as you're fairly organized, it might be okay to start with. But anyway, <laughs> as you can see, I'm, I'm struggling here trying to get all of these elements looking like the photo. There are so many layers to this. Yeah, I'm working on the gradient here, making that um, 
looking halfway decent because it extends all the way from the top down into the fuselage and it's it's just a mess and i'll be honest i kind of lost track of all the pieces when i was putting this together it's like a puzzle i mean you really have to keep track of every little piece uh, naming the layers in your layer palette helps just so you know what's what and you're not trying to guess where all these pieces go but uh, as you can see i'm getting there uh, a lot of these shapes that you see in my illustration right now are just they're just mask layers where they're i'm just trying to get the shapes created getting all the pieces to go together and then i'll go back in and add the proper colors uh, sometimes that's just the fastest way to do it instead of trying to to get everything right the first time it's just one of the things you'll learn as you go. It's You have to find your own way of doing things. And for me, just blocking everything out really quick and crudely, that's the fastest way. That's the way that I don't lose track of what I'm doing. And um, yeah, so I'm just about there. I've got this looking pretty good. All the elements are in place. And now it's just a matter of um, going back in and, and adding all the shading and highlights, which will make that look a lot better. I know it looks a little flat and a little basic right now, but give me a moment. I'll, I'll get back in there and add all those those highlights and, and shading in. Oh, and I also noticed that there was this little little graphic on the, uh, the engine there. I had to go back in after the fact and, and create that. <laughs> I totally missed it the first time, but uh, that's just the way that it goes sometimes. So I'm just trying to get my colors all matched. And as you just saw, I create all my shapes in Adobe Illustrator. So I was going back and forth between Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, you know, I create the shape in Illustrator, and then I just paste it into Photoshop, and then add all the color and shading there. It's just, just the way I like to do it. I'm using an old WestJet illustration to get some of the graphics copied over or just to match the style just to get everything right adding the registration and the Boeing titles there yeah, it's looking pretty good we're almost there I gotta get the spirit of Canada now that is a standard font uh, in Photoshop what I do is I just type it out with in any font and then I just go through all my fonts and I just try to find something that looks pretty close and I, I got up there and I believe that was din uh, so just a, a standard font that luckily I didn't have to recreate that. Recreating that would have been a lot of work. And to be honest, I don't know if I would have done that. I probably just would have tried to find a font as close as possible or something that matched as close as possible and called it done because recreating that font just for a fun illustration like this that has no purpose, honestly, it doesn't really matter. I mean, of course, if I was going to do this for a client, or if I was doing some major production or something that, that needed 100% realism, of course, I'd go back in there and recreate every single letter, letter, <laughs> every single letter from scratch in Adobe Illustrator to get that right. But uh, luckily, this was just a, a, an existing font, and I could recreate that. So now going back in and adding some gloss there, which really highlights the shape of the fuselage there makes it look more like a cylinder which is really important uh, because otherwise your illustration would look flat and uh, not very realistic so it's looking pretty good adding some reflections on the engine there and getting all the little details right get the nose numbers everything looks accurate and i do believe that is it and as you can see here, working with my PSD file is nice because I can turn layers on and off as I'm working with the individual elements, which really speeds up the process of recreating these liveries. So there you have it, the WestJet livery on the 7879. It's a beautiful livery, uh, a lot more complex than I thought it was going to be, and uh, it was fun. I, I learned a lot by doing this, uh, mostly that I need to be more organized as an illustrator. Uh, you saw me struggling there a little bit with all the, the layers and keeping track of all the pieces and parts. But, you know, that's just the way it goes. You learn something new with each illustration. And, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you in the next one.